Hello and welcome to Overwatch. My name's Lumen and right now, as you can no doubt tell, the beta has begun. We're in. I got in last night. I had to sit here watching my client download for like four to five hours. Everyone's like, hey, hey, I'm in. And they post screenshots of their 20 meg a second download. Oh, God. I, oh, man. It was painful. I got to play at like 11 p.m. I played like five games in a row and I had to pull myself away from my PC to go to sleep, wake up nice and early to get started here, get started on recording. I'm so excited. I am so absolutely excited. Now, I'm going to start by doing the tutorial. I'm going to do that right after I give you guys a quick menu tour here because things are looking pretty good. You know, we're still early days here. The beta literally just started, so there's still a lot that's going to change. Uh, as with most Blizzard betas, this is definitely not the final product. They like making big changes, especially early on. I mean, if any of you remember Heroes of the Storm when it was in the tech alpha and early beta phases, a lot changed from then to now. Like a whole lot. So expect big changes like that. For now, however, we're going to jump in, we're going to... Check the menu out, I'm going to show you the options menu, what's going on here, the social menu and all the rest. Then we're going to do the tutorial, and after that we're probably just going to jump straight into a quick match. That's actually the only option, you can click on play, and it puts you in a random match with random people on a random map. And that's it. I have lots of other plans for things that I want to do, just because of the way I like playing FPS games. I used to be a huge Quake 3 player. I am not a big fan of Quake Live. Nowadays, it just doesn't feel the same. You know what I mean? I don't know if any of you are old school Quake players, but going from Quake 3 Arena to Quake Live, Quake Live ends up feeling so flimsy. Alright, so I spent a lot of time in FPS games and I did a lot of funny things. One thing that comes to mind is I ran around empty maps, okay, to get to know, like, the lay of the land. Get to know where all the health packs were, the armor, the special little nooks and crannies that you can use to gank people from. You gotta know the map, so the chances are I might do stuff like that. You can even play versus AI here, I'd like to test that as well. Test all the difficulties of AI. I've already jumped into the AI games and I just had a quick look at it. The bots seem pretty okay. They seem pretty impressive. And all of these are things that I'd like to do. I mean, running around an empty map, it sounds pretty boring if I just say it like that, but I'm going to be doing commentary, we're going to be exploring every nook and cranny of the map, and it'll be nice to just see them without people shooting at you. All the little details that Blizzard put in there. So, look forward to the lot of that. For now, however, let's check the options menu out. You have mouse settings here, not a whole lot. I would have liked it if they had some acceleration options. I don't know if there's going to be like a console at some point where you could change things like that, but uh, the more options the better. Okay, that's like, that's always my motto when it comes to things like this. I, I found the sweet spot for me is 26 for the mouse sensitivity. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. It basically depends on your mouse and your settings and windows and stuff like that. But those are the only two options there. Invert look and the actual sensitivity. You can use a gamepad if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if that's in the game yet, but gamepad support, there you go. Sensitivity and invert look. Again, key bindings. This was very interesting to me because there are a lot of things here that you would not find if you don't actually come and look at this menu. You wouldn't really know about them. So there's the basic movement controls, weapons and abilities. That's all stuff that they do teach you. But here is stuff that you wouldn't see if you didn't come and look at this, like the communication stuff. Okay, so there's uh, actually... A key bind in for every single one that you could possibly want but the communications menu key which is C I'll show that to you guys when we in game thanks hey acknowledged I need healing Old soldiers never die, and they don't fade away. Fall in here! 
that has all of them in it. And it works the same as the Heroes of the Storm one, where it pops up a little radial menu and you can choose an option. It's pretty cool. I like it. Social menu, that's just your friends list. Uh, I don't know what spray is. I'm going to check that out. So it's T. We're going to have a look at it. And then there's the voice chat stuff. I've heard nothing but good things about the voice chat. Nothing but good things. Apparently the quality is great. It works really well. I haven't tried it yet. I'm probably going to end up disabling it when I go into games. Or maybe I'll leave it on. Okay, because that actually kind of makes for some fun and unique situations. Maybe I'll leave it on. Okay, then if you, any of you guys see me in game, we can have a, a little chat, right? Then there are spectator options. It's interesting. Hero select, scoreboard, show FPS. I think the show FPS key doesn't work where it's currently bound, but that doesn't matter because over here, there's a show stats option that you can put on. It shows your your MS, uh, three different MS. I, I don't know what that really ends up being. There are three different ones that you can look at. I'm assuming it's something like the World of Warcraft MS system where there's a world and a home MS, and then there's like a server MS as well. And then it shows your FPS and I think your graphics card, your GPU's temperature. It's always a little... I don't know, stressful putting that on because I've got a GTX Titan, as it says here, and it runs at like 80 degrees. Okay, it's just, it shoots up to 80 and it sits there because that's just how they work. And then you've got this 80 degrees Celsius there the whole time. It's, it's a little nerve wracking, but anyway. Here the display settings are. Uh, you can choose your window mode. It works. Okay, I can't move my mouse off the screen. Full screen is, is good. It's legit. You can choose your aspect ratio over here, which is nice. Uh, field of view, they default it to full, okay, so they just start you on that and you can set it lower, I'm guessing if you want to play on a TV or something. In my honest opinion, they could give us a number, firstly, I wouldn't mind a number, and I think they could give us maybe 10, 10 more, okay, it's, it's, it's just a little bit too low, tiny bit, so a little bit more would be great, maybe they will do it at some point, there's a gamma correction, uh, adjustment, chart thing here. Mine seems fine. I, I don't know. Gamma is fine. Uh, full screen play, display. You can choose where you want it on which monitor. I am now not using V-Sync or triple buffering. I'm lo definitely not limiting to 30. Uh, the stats, I'm not going to put that on for now. I have around 190 MS. Not even joking. And I'm able to play the game pretty okay. No complaints. I will again just say pff, nothing but good things about Blizzard's uh, network system. I don't know what, they, what to really call it. The net code of the game is great. I don't know what to call uh, the whole package, but the net code feels good. Uh, even using accuracy-based classes, like if you're using Widowmaker and you want to try and snipe someone, it works. You know, where you click, where your cross is, when you click, that's where the bullet will go. So even if uh, you have 190 MS, the game sort of compensates for that automatically. But... We'll we'll talk more about that when I actually play. So the stats I'm going to leave off for now. Graphics on Ultra. There's actually an epic setting. Not going to put it on that. I I want 100% silky smooth gameplay. I think that if I set it to the max, I might get some dips here and there. My lovely wife's game runs a whole lot better than mine, just because she's got a a new generation graphics card. She's got a GTX 970, and it just destroys the game. Okay, it's, it's so, so smooth on her PC. It's great on mine. No problems. No problems. None at all. Lots and lots of graphic settings here. Render scale, local fog detail, shadow detail, model detail, refraction quality, all these options here. Texture quality, filtering, dynamic reflections. Oh my god. It just keeps going, right? Good, 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 and good. Sound options. Uh, again, I was considering turning the voice chat off, but I sort of talked myself out of it <laughs> just a moment ago. You guys were here for that. Then you can just exit to desktop, okay? Uh, I found it a little weird that there's no options button. You can't, there's no button. Unless I'm just not seeing it, but you can't click anywhere to go to options. The hero that you see here, it's currently Farah. She's my favorite. She's my favy faves. I love playing on her. That's the one you last used in game. So if you play on her the whole time, she'll be on your menu the whole time. That's pretty cool. Uh, over here, you can see some options. I think when you join a party, it'll pop up here. Send friend request, promote to leader, remove from party, leave party. It's obviously none of it is usable right now. I think that given how this looks, you might at some point get portraits in the game. I don't know. You can't really see a progression system at all 
at this point. It's not in yet. Uh, same reason they've not really spoken about the payment model that they're going to use. None of that. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's looking pretty feature-packed already. Then you can open your social menu over here. The icons are currently missing, but if you're in your Battle.net client in Windows, then you can see the Overwatch icon there. So from other games, you can see uh, friends playing Overwatch and you can actually see the icon. So these icons are currently missing, but it eh, doesn't really matter. You can see uh, Klaus here is in just in Battle.net. She's just in Battle.net. He's just in Battle.net. When she goes in WoW... Oh, she's actually in WoW. She's in WoW right now and it's not showing it there. Whatever. Okay. Fine. Fine. Then there are channels here. I think that's going to be for chat and maybe voice chat. I, I don't know how that's going to work yet, but you can chat. This is general chat. You can chat with other people in the region that you're playing on, and that's pretty cool. I like the fact that there's chat right from the get-go. Something that's important to include. Uh, it's good. It's real good. I'm kind of missing the music on the menu here. I, I don't know if I don't have it on, like, loop or something. Maybe it's not looping, because it plays the song once, and then it stops. Ah. I mean, the audio settings, you can't really change the, the music volume or anything like that. Ah, whatever. Now we're going to jump into the tutorial. I apologize if it took a bit long there. I just wanted to be thorough, you know, and I'm going to do this again if they update things. So, there you go. Starting tutorial. Hello, Soldier 76. This is Athena. I will be guiding you through the combat training program. Let's begin. First, look up at the dropship above you. Thank you. We'll need some assistance for the next part of the program. Tracer, if you would. Hiya! Tracer here! Now, use your controls to follow her. Over here! Excellent. Now find Tracer again. Here I am! Let's try that one more time. Then we can move on. Up here! Now, let's go over movement in Overwatch. You can move forwards and backwards in the direction you are looking. You can also move left and right. Excellent. Let's continue. Please follow Tracer as she moves around the hangar. Pretty basic stuff, but it's important. Continue following Tracer. Tracer is moving again. Lots of finger smudges on these monitors here. Oh, God damn it, guys. Watch your hands. Wash your hands. Excellent. You seem to have the hang of it. I do. You can also jump to clear small obstacles. Enter the target range and move to the highlighted area. Looks pretty good though, right? Enter the target range and move to the highlighted area. Let's begin weapon training. First, let me put some things on your screen. <laughs> things? You can see your portrait <laughs> in the bottom left, Soldier 76. Uh. Your health is displayed to the right of your portrait. Uh. If your health reaches zero, you die. Try to keep that from happening. Okay. Your primary weapon is your heavy pulse rifle. I've set up a target for you in the range. Aim the crosshairs in the middle of the screen over the target, then fire. Nicely done. You can also hit the target up close with the butt of your rifle. Not all targets will be as easy to hit as this one. I am deploying some mobile training bots for you to destroy. Note the red outline around the robots. This means they are enemies. Nice shooting. Damaging an enemy to display their current health. <laughs> Most weapons fire a limited amount of ammo before they enter the room. Your weapon's current status is visible at the bottom right of the screen. When you run out of ammo, you will automatically be reloaded. You can also manually reload at any time. Great work. That covers the basics of your weapon. 
The next phase of the training program will focus on your abilities. Your first ability is Sprint. Move forward, then activate Sprint to move even faster. Good. Your next ability is Biotic Field. To properly demonstrate it, I need to damage you slightly. This might sting. <coughs> now deploy a Biotic Field at your feet. Stand inside the circular field to heal. Note that you will have to wait a short time before using that ability again. This cooldown time is displayed over the ability icon. I see that you are ready to continue. Very well. Your next ability is Helix Rockets. Using it launches a volley of rockets in the direction you are in. The rockets explode on contact. I have prepared a set of targets for you. Damage the targets with your Helix Rockets and we will move on. Note how the Helix Rockets damage targets near the point of impact. Now, let's discuss your ultimate ability, Tactical Visor. Ultimate abilities can change the course of the game. You must fully charge an ultimate ability before you can use it. The current charge level is displayed at the bottom of the screen. You charge your ultimate by dealing or taking damage. I'll summon some targets for you. Once the meter reaches 100%, you can activate your ultimate is 50% charge. Ultimate is almost fully charged. Your tactical visor is charged. When it's active, aim in the direction of an enemy and open fire. Now, activate your tactical visor I've and got open you in fire. All targets destroyed. Nice work, Soldier 76. For the final phase of the training program, you'll capture an objective. Your current objective is indicated with a directional marker on your screen. Head through the open door and move to your objective. Why is there peanut butter in the shooting range? <laughs> uh, and that book. <laughs> the whole setup of Soldier 76, uh, it kind of... It gives me old school like Half-Life vibes. By a bright outline on the ground. To capture it, move inside the air. And mainly because this feels like the machine gun that had the grenade launcher attached to it. In the air, progress towards capturing the objective. Current capture progress is displayed on the screen. If there are enemies in the area with you. Capture progress is paused. Capture progress pauses if you move outside of the area. <laughs> she sounded pretty angry at me there. <laughs> the objective. Well done. Thank you, thank you. There are times when you might want to switch heroes due to current combat conditions. Bring up the hero select screen to view all available characters. Let's try switching to Tracer. First, select Tracer from the list of heroes below. When you have a hero selected, you can view details about them. Now confirm your selection. Well done. You have completed your basic combat training. Oh, I was having fun. Man. So there you go. That's the basic combat training. It is, it is really basic, okay? Uh, but I do think it's something that is important to have in a game like this, and I'm pretty certain they will receive a whole lot of feedback. The Overwatch team will probably make modifications and adjustments and include some slightly more important stuff in there that you might need to know. Maybe some of the communication options and stuff like that. I don't know. There's probably a whole lot more they could fit in there. That's just the super, super basics. I like it. I mean, it's, it's a basic tutorial. You can practice versus AI as well if you want to get the hang of the game there. And I think that should be enough for now at least.
I mean, there aren't that many people playing, and the chances are most people, they've played enough FPS games to be able to handle what Overwatch is and has, because for the most part, it seems like it's pretty easy to understand. I mean, the the difficulty for me thus far has come from identifying heroes and trying to remember what abilities they have available to them. But that's something that you need to just play a lot to get used to. Same for the maps and stuff. Don't know the maps, don't know where to find health packs and stuff like that. It's pretty predictable in many situations, but at the same time, obviously, you know, some of the maps I've not even played yet, so that's going to be tough. But that's going to be it for this video. You can check back here real soon for more. The next video is going to be a quick match game. I'm just going to jump in. I'm probably going to stick with one hero most of the time, and it'll be Farah, just because I want to take things slow. I'm going to be playing all the heroes. I'm going to have some matches where I'll switch around a lot, some where I will stick with one hero for most of the match, and I'll just see how it goes, you know? I'd like to dedicate a video to each hero, like, again, the next one could just be for Farah. the one after that, maybe I'll play Widowmaker. Who knows? I think it depends on the map as well, and all the rest, the team composition. I mean, if three people in my team want to play Farah, I might not play Farah. you know? But that's it. We're in the Overwatch beta. It's all very exciting. You guys can tell me what you think about what you've seen thus far. I, again, I love it. I've had so much fun in the little bit that I've played. I can't wait for them to add a progression system, like a proper way to see your stats and stuff. It, phew, there's so much, but for now, being able to play the game is more than enough. Much more than enough. So again, check back here soon for more. Give it a like, share it, and do all that other stuff. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you got in. Please, let me know. <sighs> and if you're on EU, I hope we get to play against each other. I hope I get to own you with my rockets. Happy that.